Did you know that Stanford students have won medals in every Olympics since 1908? You're listening to The Daily Brew from the Stanford Daily. This is Chloe Burrow and Lely Rezvani. This week, we're talking about the Dean's Leave of Absence policy. We believe that the current Dean's Leave of Absence policy represents an area where Stanford can do much better as an institution. Students rallied in White Plaza on Wednesday, protesting the university's leave of absence policy. The current policy states that students deemed disruptive to the university may be forced to leave. When I heard the nurses refer to us, they didn't refer to us by our names, they referred to us by our room number. One of our reporters, Griffin Samorante, commented on the rally. One line that someone said was, that being a student at Stanford or enrolling at Stanford comes with a diagnosis. Uh, in the moment, it was just like a very jarring statement. Uh, they talked about like the culture at Stanford surrounding academics. Um, one student even talked about how many friends who put grades and work above their mental health and how little sleep everyone was getting and how that was a normal thing on campus. Wang Yi Zhang spoke to Terrence Zhao, one of the organizers of the rally. Sophomore year, I wrote an op-ed for The Daily. It was a letter to my community, the L.A. suburb that I grew up, where mental health was taboo. We had um, a culture in our schools that was just so deeply toxic to everyone's mental health because it was so focused on achievement and just feverishly sort of working as hard as you could. I, I mean, I was not sleeping enough. I don't think anybody was really sleeping enough. That article went viral in my community where like teachers at my high school were sharing it. Like it got thousands of clicks and people were like reaching out to me saying either thank you or oh my God, this needed to be said. And then I mean, I also had like local Asian American media sort of pick it up and like spin it in different ways. When the article was translated into Chinese, there was a commenter on the bottom who commented something along the lines of, this seems like a fake article because I don't think anyone who's weak like that would get into Stanford. And those reactions made him realize something about our generation's culture. We are sort of at the epicenter of it all. Stanford students have had to not only be part of the system, but be part of the quote-unquote top of the system where exposure to those kinds of stressors are quite high. Our work and our lives, frankly, being this pressure cooker environment. And that's, you know, that's concerning to me. So the article got posted. This is Terrence sharing his experience at last year's NSO. It was this one kid who I thought just always had it together. And he said, dude, I had no idea it was like this for you. I thought you were like the one kid who just always had it together. Afterwards, I invited a couple of friends and afterwards one of them said to me was you might be like the first person who is a peer who's ever talked to them to some of them about mental health and my first immediate thought was like oh my god that can't be right that just can't be right and then I thought about it was like yeah if someone had talked about mental health at my NSO they would have been the first one what do you think about the dean's leave of absence policy the dean's leave of absence policy is um quite flawed. I'm not going to say that we shouldn't have a policy where it makes the university possible to remove students from campus for their health, but the important thing is that it should be um, a policy that's designed to protect students' health most of all. Terrence went on to describe how the policy charges a late housing termination fee when the students are involuntarily removed from housing in the middle of the quarter. According to this policy, students also lose at least a quarter of guaranteed housing. There's allegations that students have to write a letter essentially apologizing for the disruption, the quote-unquote disruption they've caused to um, the campus community in order to return, which I think obviously should not happen because like all of these things, it, it, it creates this image that students with mental health issues are a liability as opposed to what it actually is, which is a disability that both legally and morally deserves proper and reasonable accommodations as do other physical disabilities. So what's the message of this rally? I think first of all, it's a message of solidarity. that The campus community stands strong 
to support like each and every one of us who might be going through uh, mental health issues or just need these services. And I think the other message is that we want Stanford to treat students as people, not liabilities. I asked Terrence, what does he want to say to the people who are listening to this? He said he didn't have a single message that can apply to all. Because mental health issue, it's something so personal, something that cannot be and should not be generalized. But he said this. Just to value um, ourselves and take care of ourselves. I think each and every one of us is worth that level of self-care. And for those of us who struggle with mental health issues, Stanford's culture only makes it worse. And we say to one another, take care of yourself. But I don't know how many of us are really doing it. This episode was led by Chloe Barreau and Lily Resvani, with help from Wangi Jung and Griffin Samarante.